If you like the up-to-the-minute auto news and analysis you get from AutoLine Daily, tell the world by voting for us as Best Business Podcast in the 2009 Podcast Awards. Just go to www.podcastawards.com and enter AutoLine Daily in the business category. When it asks for a URL, type in autolinedaily.com. The voting period is only open for a few short days, so go to podcastawards.com and vote now. Every voice counts, and we'd appreciate your help. Thank you for your support. Autoline Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. GM's latest marketing campaign has some surprising results. Tata tries to fill the gap in its lineup, and Citroën plays with augmented reality. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Thursday, October 15th. I'm Kate Leinbaugh from the Wall Street Journal, taking a turn in the AutoLine Daily anchor chair. And now, here's the news. When General Motors unveiled the May the Best Car Win campaign a couple months ago, many observers wondered if that was the right strategy for this fresh from bankruptcy automaker. Well, according to marketing chief Bob Lutz, we have a winner, and it is in fact GM. Wards reports that Mr. Lutz told reporters yesterday that the company sold around 150,000 vehicles since the program started, with only about 100 customers who took the 60-day money-back challenge. The rest opted for a $500 cash incentive. And in the end, only one General Motors car was returned during that two months, a Chevrolet Corvette. And that, according to Mr. Lutz, ended up as a swap. So really, I guess Mr. Lutz is saying GM batted 1,000, which is a good number no matter what team you're playing for. Making the rumors officially official, Autoblog tells us GM announced Buick's new midsize sedan will be called the Regal. The nameplate has been off the market for six years, but the company says it still resonates with buyers. When the sedan comes to the US, it should be the same as the Chinese version of the car we're showing you here, which is based on the Opel Insignia. According to the Detroit Free Press, Indian automaker Tata launched a new sedan yesterday. It's called the Indigo Manza. It's designed to help fill the chasm between the company's Nano and Jaguar models. It offers features like Bluetooth connectivity, a temperature sensor, and power outlets. The Indigo Manza is designed to compete with cars like the Ford Fiesta and the Honda City. From computer circuits to advanced batteries, rare earth metals play a critical role in high technology. Right now, China is practically the only source in the world for these metals. And with talks that it may ban exports, the need for another supply is critical. Thankfully, for technophiles and automakers alike, the LA Times reports that a Colorado-based company has embarked on a two-year program to reopen a mine in California. The 2,200-acre Mountain Pass Mine, located in the Mojave Desert, contains the world's largest deposit of rare earth metal. Concentrations of some elements are double what's found in China. Reopening the facility should create some 900 jobs and provide a stable domestic supply of these materials. The facility has been closed since 2002 because of environmental concerns and low-cost competition from, surprise, China. Chinese automaker Cherry plans to build a factory in Turkey. According to the AFP, the company will establish the plant with its dealer partner in Turkey and invest $500 million in the project. The plant would produce the Cherry A1 hatchback. The deal, however, still needs approval from the Turkish government. French automaker Citroën is reviving its famous DS nameplate as part of a lineup of near-premium vehicles. To promote the new models, the company launched a web page that features an interactive new technology called augmented reality. What you do is print a sheet of paper with an image on it, then go to their website and hold the paper up to your webcam. It recognizes what's on the sheet and lays a three-dimensional image over the paper. When you move it around, the image on the computer screen moves too. It's pretty impressive. There's even a neat little driving simulator game. It's definitely worth checking out. Coming up next, Coscada makes a big announcement about ethanol production. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous. But with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. 
Critics argue that biofuels are not a viable option to get us off our dependence on oil for a number of reasons. But those concerns may be answered thanks to biofuel producer Coscada. The company just announced the start of its ethanol facility that will demonstrate its process for producing ethanol is commercially viable. What makes Coscada's process appealing is the fact that ethanol can be produced from virtually any carbon-based feedstock. Company president and CEO Bill Rowe explains. Lighthouse has the flexibility to actually run a, and process a variety of different feedstocks, much like the full-scale facilities will be able to do, including things such as uh, wood waste, uh, construction debris, uh, purpose-grown energy crops, agricultural waste, even municipal solid waste and elements of everyday garbage. It's that kind of broad flexibility and overall pot of uh, feedstock that's available to us that we think is going to be very impactful in the future. Since it's cost effective to produce, it will allow ethanol to compete with gasoline. We believe that any next generation transportation fuel, particularly biofuels, they have to be able to compete with gasoline straight up and without the benefit of long-term government subsidies. The fact that our process has great feedstock flexibility, many of which are economically advantaged, the fact that our process is so efficient, uh, we, it, it all gives rise to the fact that we are competitive and can compete with gasoline straight up and without these subsidies in the future. Coscada says the technology is ready to go and that the next step is to build full-scale facilities and begin licensing the technology. In addition, the company has partnered with GM and will provide them with ethanol for the automaker to use at its proving grounds for its E85 capable vehicles. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time when Mr. Auto Extremist himself, Peter DiLorenzo, Fly solo as host. Joining him in the studio are Jim Hall of 2953 Analytics, Ron Maloney of WDIV Channel 4 News Detroit, and of course, as Frank Marcus mentioned in yesterday's Daily, Frank Marcus from Motor Trend. Should be an action packed show. Anyway, I'm Kate Leinbaugh from The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.